In this video, we will show you how to replace your radiator. Let's get started. Before we get started on our job, make sure that you evacuate your refrigerant from inside the AC system. Make sure that the engine and the cooling system is cool to the touch. Make your way over here to the cap on the coolant reservoir. We'll turn this counterclockwise and slowly lift it up and away from our face, releasing pressure from inside of the cooling system. Once you've done that, we can put this cap back on. Move along to this hose. Use some pliers, squeeze the clamp, slide it down, remove the hose from the reservoir. Give it a quick check. Make sure it's still soft and pliable and it's not torn, worn, or damaged in any way. The next thing that we'll do is remove the one eight millimeter headed mounting bolt that holds the reservoir to the fan. Continue on by lifting the reservoir up and off of the fan shroud and twist it, setting it off to the side. Continue on over to the driver's side of the fan shroud. You'll find that you have your power steering reservoir with one eight millimeter headed bolt. Remove the bolt and set this aside as well. Underneath where that reservoir was, you'll find a wiring harness that leads to the fan. Right where my thumb is, there's a rectangular squeeze tab. Squeeze that in and separate this. Once you have it apart, give it a quick check for corrosion and then set it aside. Now, if you were to look underneath the upper radiator hose, you're going to find that there's an eight millimeter headed bolt holding the fan to the radiator. Remove that eight millimeter headed bolt. Once that's out of there, make your way over to the other side of the fan and remove that eight millimeter headed bolt as well. Just underneath that mounting bolt, you'll find an area where your two transmission cooler lines are held in place to the fan shroud. Carefully separate that. Make your way back over to the driver's side. You'll find that there's an area where wiring is attached to that fan shroud. Go ahead and pop that out of place. Now let's reach down to the bottom of the fan shroud. You're going to find that you have your lower radiator hose. Go ahead and lift that up and pull it away from the plastic bracket. Now let's reach down into this area, grab onto the fan assembly, give it a little wiggle while lifting it up. Carefully remove it from the vehicle. Now let's move along to removing this plastic panel. You're going to find three push clips. These push clips are very easy. Grab the top, turn them counterclockwise, and lift it up and out. We'll just take those two pieces, rest them together. There should be one right in the center here, ours is missing, and then one at the far end. Once you have all those out of there, go ahead and grab onto this and remove it from the vehicle. Let's move along to removing this area along the top of the radiator. Just lift this right up and off of here. Give it a quick inspection and set it aside. Okay, now we can move along to removing the air conditioning lines from the AC condenser. You want to be extremely careful when you start removing these. There could still be a little bit of pressure inside of the system. We'll use a 13 millimeter socket to remove each of the mounting nuts. Continue on to the lower line. Next, looking down in the same area, except along the front of the AC condenser, you're going to find that you have an eight millimeter headed bolt that holds a bracket. That bracket holds the radiator and the AC condenser in place. Once we have this side separated and the bracket out of the way, we'll continue on along the other side of the AC condenser radiator assembly. Continue on with a curved pick. Make your way down underneath that bracket and gently lift it up and rearward. 
After that, make your way over to the other bracket, do the same thing. While we're over on this side, continue on to removing the air deflector from the AC condenser. There's a couple little plastic push clips there. You can pop those out of place. Make your way over to the other side of the AC condenser and do the same thing. Now we can pull this backwards a little bit and remove our eight millimeter headed bolt on the passenger side. At this point, you can separate the AC condenser from the radiator on the passenger side. Now let's make our way under the front of the vehicle with a collection receptacle. Find the drain on the bottom of the radiator. Go ahead and start draining that coolant. Once it's done draining, cap it off. Now that we're down to a steady trickle, we'll just go ahead and close this. Make sure that's snug. Continue on by removing each of your air baffles. The next thing that you will want to do is remove the transmission cooler lines from the bottom of the air conditioning condenser. On ours, they're frozen to the fitting itself, so I will be cutting these and replacing them. For you, just use a 16 millimeter wrench, turn these counterclockwise to remove each of them from the condenser. The next thing that we'll do is remove the power steering cooler from this area. Looking along each side of the air conditioning condenser, you're going to find that you have a black tab that's located on the radiator and it holds the power steering cooler to it. Go ahead and carefully pull that black tab away using a large pick and lift up on the power steering cooler. Once you have one side broken free, continue on over to the other side. From under the vehicle, remove your lower radiator hose. On this, you'll find that you have one clamp that you can squeeze with some long nose pliers. And then just go ahead and slide that clamp down the hose, remove the hose from the radiator. Continue on to your upper radiator hose. Before you continue pulling up the assembly, Pay attention to your power steering hoses along the driver's side of the radiator. There's a little clip that holds them in place to the radiator. We'll use a small pry bar, get in between the area to gently separate them. Now we can start removing the AC condenser from the radiator. Look down along the bottom. On each side, you'll find a little groove that the condenser needs to slide over into. So with that said, we'll just slide it out of position. Once it's out of there, go ahead and lift it up, give it a quick inspection and set that aside. Now we can remove this bottom air baffle. On either side of the radiator, you'll find the rubber mount. Remove the pair. Now we can finish removing this last hose. Quick inspection, set that aside. Okay friends, let's prepare our brand new radiator for installation. When you're doing this, be extremely careful not to damage the cooling fins on your brand new radiator. Let's start down along the bottom of the radiator with this air baffle. Looking at it, you can see that there's a groove that needs to fit along the bottom of the radiator. We wanna make sure that we have this facing towards where the AC condenser will be located. Go ahead and turn the radiator over. We're going to continue on with these clips. You'll notice where my index fingers are, there's an area that protrudes outward. 
it's important to note. You want to make sure you have the area that protrudes outward facing towards the radiator as you slide these into position. Now we can continue on with our upper hose here. We'll slide that into position on the radiator and clamp it on. Continue on to your two rubber side mounts, one on either side of the radiator. Now let's continue on by putting the air conditioning condenser onto the radiator. As we slide this into position, make sure that this area does not fall off. Okay, let's slide our assembly into the vehicle. Now as you slide this down, we're trying to line up the bottom of the radiator with the bottom holes on the cross member that comes across. Once it's in there, it should sit pretty much flush with the front end here. Let's remount that upper radiator hose. Let's continue on by putting in our 8mm headed bolt that holds the AC condenser to the radiator. Once it's started in, just go ahead and snug it up. Let's slide that bracket into place on both sides of the radiator. Put in your 8mm headed mounting bolt and snug it up. Do the same to the other side. Carefully put your power steering cooler back in place. Let's get this side as well. Spring it up and over those clips, slide it down. Now we can continue on to our power steering cooler. You want to make sure that it sits inside the grooves on either side of the radiator. Let's get it lined up and slide it down in. Make your way over to reconnecting your transmission cooler lines. Make sure that's nice and tight. Do the same to the other. Now we can put on the passenger side air baffle. Once you have it at the proper height, go ahead and start in the bottom. Make your way over to your lower radiator hose. We'll slide that onto the radiator and put the clamp in position. The next thing you'll want to do is make sure that the drain on the radiator is nice and tight. Making our way up along the top, we'll continue on with the air baffle on the passenger side. Line it up, press it into place. Now we can move along to our air conditioning lines. You'll notice on these, each of them has two gaskets. One's flat like this, and the other one is an O-ring. It's important to make sure that you clean and inspect them. Replace them as necessary. Once it's cleaned and inspected, continue on by adding some PAG oil directly to the seal. Now we can put on our other seal as well, making sure that we lubricate this as well. Take the bottom line and slide it into position. Put on your 13 millimeter mounting nut, snug it up, and then torque it to 133 inch pounds. Do the same to the other line. Let's carefully take our fan assembly and slide it into position. Now once we have that going down into position, pay attention along each side of the radiator. You'll have the area where your mounting bolt needs to be, and then directly below that, you're going to find that you have a hook on the radiator. The fan needs to slide down into that hooked area on both sides. Once it's in position, start in both of your mounting bolts. Once you have the bottom in there, continue on to starting in both of your mounting bolts and snug them up. That one's nice and tight. We'll do the same on the other side. Now let's have a look down along the bottom of the fan. Go ahead and put the lower hose back into its original position. Let's slide this in. Let's put on this plastic piece. 
line that up so it's centered and press it down. Reconnect in your fan assembly. Listen for a click, give it a tug to make sure it's secured. Continue on to your power steering reservoir. You'll notice in the fan shroud, you have a slot right here, and on the bottom of the reservoir itself, you'll have a little nub that protrudes down. Should fit right into there. Line up your mounting bolt hole. After that, go ahead and snug it right up. Now we can continue on with the coolant reservoir. Down along the bottom, you have the area that protrudes down. Just underneath that, on the fan itself, you'll have an area for it to slide into. Let's get that lined up and slide it down into position. Let's get this hose on here. Install your clamp. Let's continue on with our forward upper cowl. Slide that in position. Once it's on there, continue on with each of your push clips. Okay friends, the next thing that you would want to do would be to install the proper manufacturer specified coolant. Make sure it's 50-50 mixed. While we're filling this up, we're going to be paying attention to the ad line. You'll notice as you run the vehicle, the coolant level is going to go down a little bit because air will be making its way out of the system. We'll keep refilling. Once you add this up to the maximum line, go ahead and carefully start up the vehicle. You're going to let it run for a little while. It needs to get up to normal operating temperature. While you're doing that, pay attention inside this area. Like I said, the fluid will be making its way down. You wanna make sure you keep adding so it's at the maximum line. Once your cooling fan turns on and you have plenty of heat coming out of the vents, make sure that the coolant is up to the maximum line and then reinstall your cap. With the vehicle running and on a flat level surface, it's important to make sure you check your transmission fluid level. Along the backside of the engine is where that dipstick's going to be located. I have the engine off right now so I can show you what's going on. We'll go ahead and pull this right out of here. I'll wipe it off. And now if you were to look at the far end of it, you're going to find that you have two dots. The dot closest to the end is the low line, and then the one just above it is the maximum. As long as you're anywhere in between those areas, you should be good to go. When you're sure it's at the proper level, go ahead and reinstall that dipstick. Now, when you install your AC condenser, it's important to make sure that you add at least one ounce of manufacturer specified PAG oil to the AC system. After that, have a professional recharge the air conditioning system. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.